Welcome to the Stop Doing Stupid Stuff podcast. In today's episode, we're thrilled to have a special guest, Gabby Steele, joining our hosts Tim Keefe and Andreas Wieman for an engaging discussion on empowering data-driven decisions. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Stop Doing Stupid Stuff podcast with Tim Keefe and Andreas Wieman. We've got an exciting topic and guest this week. Uh, Tim, I'll let you do the honors. All right. Thanks, Andreas. Hey, I'd like to, everybody out there, I'd like to introduce Gabby Steele. Gabby is um, working with a company called Prequel, actually not working with, co-founded and CEO, co-CEO of Prequel. Um, and Gabby, with that, maybe you could give us a minute or two about what Prequel is all about and what problems you're trying to solve. And then we'd love to talk more about what that impact is in the world of customer and employee experience. Yeah, totally. Thank you both for having me, Tim and Andres. Um, so a little bit of background on Prequel, the current company I am working on. Previously, I founded a data engineering consultancy with my current co-founder, Leah Weiss. And I've spent my entire career thinking about how do we build data-driven culture for business teams who don't understand the technical solutions behind reporting and analytics? And how do we empower data teams to do better work? Before I was at WeWork, I worked for the Washington Post. I have a background in data visualization, uh, storytelling work. I was there during the election period. But about a year and a half ago, my co-founder, Leah Weiss, and I decided that data modeling and this problem that we'd been facing time and time again with customers who we were implementing modern data stack solutions for, but at the end of the day, continued to have this problem of being able to manage their own metrics on the business side and data teams being able to do more interesting work than being short order cooks for the business every time definitions needed to be changed, we realized there has to be a product solution here. So what Prequel does is it sits on top of your data and provides a semantic layer, a business logic layer with both a no code UI that business teams can access, edit, govern, and also generates clean usable code that data teams can access. We're really focused on this massive problem of making data that isn't structured accessible to teams that don't necessarily understand the process of structuring it <laughs> very close to the business metrics. Yeah, I think it's, uh, well, I, it, it's when you and I talked before this, obviously, you know, kind of resonated very strongly with me because this is such a big problem. Um, and looking at it as a, not as a data person, but just sitting there as a business guy. And, and it's really funny because a lot of times when we're consulting, I'll re, you know lead in with the conversation about, okay, what are you trying to do? And then how would we know we got there? Like, what is the metrics that you're trying to drive to? And, and, and are they, you know, are they achievable? Not so much achievable from the standpoint, can you get to the goal? But can, can you even measure your progress to get to the goal? And what are you using to measure that progress? And uh, anyway, I, I think it's fascinating. No, exactly. And I, the amount of money that companies have spent on, <laughs> well, I, I've got quotes here, data and data solutions in the past 20 years to get to a place where every consulting project, every product, everything they do is data driven is like, it's just exponential millions of dollars that sadly haven't really translated like we're not in a position where teams are better faster spending less money even with all the work that's gone in and hence why we're focused on this problem for for prequel we felt like any product that went to market in the data space was going to address this in some way and even though it's a very hard problem we were like we got to run towards the fire here because Nothing else works if your metrics are not structured and if you can't think about them in the way that you're sort of describing now with consulting, with any project. People need to think about measurable outcomes and then you need the data behind it. So it's a challenge, but um, we're, we're making progress here. Andreas, I know you, you're you much more of a data-driven guy than I am, but I mean, as, based on some of our conversations, I mean, what would you be pitching out there? If you were to think about a solution set, how would you want to bring this to market? Or in, with our clients? Yeah, with my data expertise, um, I know how to use ChatGPT really well now. So <laughs> that's where I make most of my decisions. 
<laughs> no, in, in all seriousness. No, really, I mean, it's, what, a, it's a skill. It's going to become a college course, I feel like. It's not so, you know, I'm impressed. We can talk. Yeah, yeah. No, there, there's a little bit of that in there. But no, in all seriousness, exactly what Gabby said is, you know, I, and I'm going to say this in my non-20 minute typical talk. Um, it, we've made so many decisions just on what I would call a like gut feeling or, or a subjective feeling on experiences in the past. And what we're not realizing and what, what a lot of leaders aren't realizing is there's constant variables being introduced that we have to make, we got to be decisive with, and we can't even get to retroactively looking at data cleanly and making a decision from there that allows us to live in the moment, let alone getting to a predictive state and anticipatory state. So that way we can prevent, you know, ills from occurring. And that's where I think, you know, prequel is, is exciting because it's not just an out of the box, you know, here's a structured data set. And then that structured data set is taken from regardless of the industry, the size of the company, et cetera. It's where unstructured data is, is customized into structured data. There is a huge market potential addressable market need for that right now, just for people to get in and, and business leaders to understand where they should be focusing their efforts on. Because right now it just feels like it's very broad stroke or what I would call ocean boiling. Um, and it's just not as, as practi practical as it should be. So it's exciting yeah. to, to look at prequel and um, hear about it more, Gabby. But uh, I, I'm definitely yeah. one of those folks who I don't trust my own intuition enough without having some sort of data to review before I make a decision or I'm leading others to, to make uh, decisions themselves. Yeah, and I think with folks like that, it's it's great to be data driven. It's just because there are so many limitations, you end up like either crunching some numbers yourself and being like, I trust this enough, or relying on a metric that maybe was defined years ago. Like you're never fully sure. Uh there's a lot of words right. on the prequel website right now around like make the numbers match because what we find frequently at organizations that first initially with our like data engineering consulting work and now with our customers, there are these champions, these data people that want to make decisions. So they sort of start get, gathering their own source of truth, even when you're paying for a warehouse and all of these other tools, because numbers making numbers match is really hard. There's a million reasons yeah. why, but it, at, a, at a point in a company's journey where they have so much data coming from so many different places, and they need to centralize it and then create a semantic layer or a metrics layer, of course, numbers are going to be messy. Of course, they're not going to match. And as you're sharing, it's so critical that in the moment you're making a decision, you have something you can trust. So people scrape things together, but it's not necessarily creating this idea of data-driven culture. Our consultancy was called data culture. Right. And I love working with folks who are trying to solve that problem. But if there's an the last thing I'll say on this exact note is you mentioned, you know, you're playing with chat GPT. Like, we're now in a world where technology, I feel, needs to catch up. And because it's such a hard challenge, a lot of different reasons, it hasn't. But we see prequel as sort of the, the pipes that can power really strong LLMs as well. Because the, the chat GPT part will only ever be as good, just like Tableau is only ever as good as the numbers that come into it. You still need <laughs> the data to be structured, right? Like it's, there's this question. Yeah. So, so I think it's a huge opportunity this moment. Um, but yeah. there's a lot of of work to be done around just I like spending time with folks like you all who are like, yeah, you know, I use data, but I'm not I wouldn't consider myself only a data person. I'm trying you're trying to solve meaningful business challenges. And I think that's a big mistake that data teams have have failed to partner with those folks in yeah. the past 20 years of tools. Well, and I, I think that's a really important one, too, because you end up where you have data scientists who are brilliant at telling you what numbers influence the, these other numbers, but then how, what's the context of that within the business to be meaningful, right? Yeah, oh, that's a great number, but I can't really do anything with that. How about these other things over here that may be more areas where I can influence or I can leverage, I would better leverage that information. I mean, one of the things that we're doing a lot um, and we're leaning in heavy on our business is we look at business and there's like two core problems. One is, people, right? Because people are not, they're not the same. They're not fungible. They're not widgets, right? They're all a little bit different and they're messy, right? They're, they're emotional yeah. things. And, and those are the people that are employees and those are the people that are our customers. And 
like that's very unstructured stuff, right? Emotional stuff is very unstructured. Totally. And how and how people respond to stimuli isn't always as easy to be predicted, especially in the in the world that we used to live in, where it was all sampling. Now, of course, we can look at the entire data universe and hopefully be better at. Predictive is is kind of a dangerous word, but I think it it is where we want to get to, right? Like it, one of our、Absolutely. things is how do we predict employees' likelihood to leave? I was just looking at a report the other day, and the、uh, attrition, employee attrition, within the first twelve months of、uh, employment, is like forty seven percent across all industries in the United States.、Mm-hmm. That's insane, right? Like that's we're doing something really wrong there. If we're if we're not able to improve that, because just think of the money you're burning. Fifty percent of your new employees leave in a year. Holy crap! It's crazy. <laughs> It's absolutely crazy. So, so we're looking at that and saying, okay, now how do we get that thermometer? On employees, so that's our one of our products is this balance wise IQ, and it's structured and unstructured data. But even the structured data is really somewhat unstructured, and right、mm-hmm. in that it's qualitative. It's a, it's an emotional. How do you feel about things? And then we want to tie that together with more quantitative data, like outcomes, and be able to say, oh, really interesting. I can align my employee satisfaction. Not in the traditional. Oh, ninety-two percent of my employees are satisfied or very satisfied, but rather, how is Tim feeling about his job, and how are Tim's outcomes with his employees driving business outcomes,、mm. which solves that very interesting question that we used to hear all the time around NPS. People would go, "What's the value of one point of NPS?" <laughs> and you go, "Ah,、uh, it depends, right? Like it depends on your business, depends on a lot of things."、Um, anyway. I, I think this is a fascinating area to get into because it's this, you know. To, and I love the comment about LLMs because that's the next step for us, which is、100%. how do we build LLMs that are going to drive the right recommendation engine out of a generative AI tool that will help businesses address the Tim's not feeling good about work. Okay, what's the underlying cause of that? Is it external to the business? Is it internal to the business? Is it We move them to a new office. We make them come into work three days a week for no good reason, whatever it might be. And then, is there something we can do about that so that we can move Tim from a quiet quitting, underperforming employee who's about to walk out the door to somebody who is contributing and feeling good about what they're doing? Because, again, our belief, the marketing math is, if you take care of your employees, they'll take care of your customers, which then drives the right business outcomes. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. People analytics space. The, I know that you're doing a lot of work with HR teams right now. Has been historically underserved and behind in this area, where on the technology side, there's actually a lot that's been done to solve some of these problems. To to have a natural language solution to asking questions about your employees and all of those things. My belief, and obviously this is the seat that I'm in anyway, is that. It's it's the underlying data structures that are just not good enough, and the way that people are joining that data and making it, you know, into a structure where you can easily ask questions, then collecting the right data. You're talking about NPS scores. Are we asking employees the right questions that can generate the right answers to the responses that leadership is going to have? Continues to be a, a big question mark. I have some friends who started companies in this space, and I'm excited to see directionally where it goes.、Um, But where prequel sets is really at this, it's it's a bit of a horizontal approach as well. Like you can right, use it to、right. power anything.、Um, so yeah, exciting. I mean, Andreas, what do you think about? You know, thinking about、um, like balance, vice IQ, and some of the stuff、yeah. you and I've been kicking around for years. No, I I agree, and it's like I think of hypotheticals、um, of, of what I would like to do. So, for example, if I go back and look at doing an event. With some of my employees,、um, Tim, we always joke about it, right? Like pizza party, like it's 1995 or something. You have pizza party <laughs> or some some kind of fun, engaging event. All right, that's what we're doing in 2024. Right? There's a Bezos、um, joke about pizza that I'm going to make about team size. You know, like nobody it should always be a two two team t- pizza. Do you know what I'm talking about here? Where like you shouldn't、yeah. have teams that are larger that they couldn't share two pies. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, a really good I mean, one. A little bit different, but I think about it often. But anyway, yeah. 
nice. I mean, I can eat a pie by myself. But exactly. So Andres plus <laughs> a normal group of people. No, so so pizza parties. Yeah, I love. Yeah, that. but but if we do something engaging with, uh, let's say, frontline workers, and we kind of go and, and we have this assumption again. This gets back to the subjective side of, of saying, all right, we're going to do this fun event, and I think it's fun, and the 25 team members that are participating think it's fun. Well, then when they go interact with, let's say it's a hotel, so it's hotel staff that's customer facing, or it's a CX, uh, customer experience contact center, and they go back and, and interface with customers there. Um, I like to measure things on how was their opening? Did they seem more energetic? Did they have, if we have an NLP and an NLU on it to measure, was there a better level of sentiment? Was there a better voice infliction? You know, all of these things that'll generate more data points for us to go back and analyze and then say, okay, is there, can we do an R square? Can we do a regression analysis and see if there is connection there rather than, oh, well, Tim sounded pretty good when he, this is my sarcastic voice, by the way, Gabby. Oh, Tim did really good when he went back there. Um, so yeah, I think this this works and they, they kind of run with it. Like that seriously is how I've personally seen business leaders make decisions. And there's such a better way if you have the technology and you have the, um, again, it, it starts with that unstructured data, but even the idea of where you can go look to create some of these new metrics, which again is why I think prequel is really exciting because you can create new metrics, a new metric, what I call metric combinations there outside of the manual side of doing it in 100 you know, Excel or, or doing it into um, uh, SQL databases and things like that. Yeah, so I could, that's, that's a good point to kind of get into where a few things. One, I want to talk about these business leaders that are making decisions with data in ways that could be so much better, but no one's really speaking their language. The other is the point that you made, which is, yeah, Prequel decided to not just be an API, but to build a no-code interface. Uh, and that, I think, was the differentiator because we really, really care about these business teams that they would otherwise be doing the work probably in Excel. But that means business logic is now no longer living in a central place. That's how numbers don't match. Someone's working in Excel. They're doing, as you shared, metric combinations or building metrics on metrics. So we're losing that knowledge with that individual on their personal computer. Like we can talk about the security side of it, but just generally like business logic at almost every company today is stored in a decentralized way, which makes it impossible to make those numbers match. So we're trying to bring people back into this, this layer that essentially does live in the warehouse where data teams can see code. If you have a data team or a data person, we can reduce resources there as well, or just give data people back the time that they could be focused on better things. Um, that's the way that we're thinking about this problem. But there's it, it does rise, it does create this question that prequel faces a lot where people aren't used to having that business logic layer. They know Excel exists, they know BI tools exist, and they know you have a warehouse. But we're coming in saying, how cool would it be if you Mr. COO or CT, whatever it is, could go in and actually see those metrics and build on top of them and then provision licenses for marketing leaders to also go and build on top of those. And you could track that and being able to position this as like the data access, data management tool of the future that will also be beneath yeah. your LLMs. It, it's really like a big question. And, and my approach is coming to talk to folks like you and finding the business leaders and talking to them about the benchmark metrics they care the most about. How do we use those to power our models so that we can then predict things? Like that's where I'm spending my days. Um, but there's a lot of work to be done to convince people, hey, you don't need to buy that 500K price tag of Tableau licenses for your sales and marketing team. It's not really gonna make them data driven. Give them something that, that allows them to interact with the numbers and, and input their own logic. Um, right. So we're like inching towards that, but and and my market that I focus on is I chatted with Tim about this, but you know high revenue businesses, businesses that are are successful and doing well, you know could be a ten person company, could be ten thousand with low data resources. So these are like old retail enterprises sometimes that are finally modernizing. I don't know if their revenues are as high. Media like dinosaurs, so to speak. I need a better word for these this market. And then a lot of people back. <laughs> this is, uh, so that that was initially why I really wanted to chat with you. But yeah, curious what your thoughts are and how do we go find these people, help them, and give them a solution that really is built for them. Well, I 
it's interesting. I just I was at a, an event last night, and um, you know, kind of a relative by marriage of mine works for a 150 year old company, shipping company out here on the West Coast, Amazing. and and kind of a fascinating conversation about that. You know, when you think about transportation logistics, very very data oriented underneath it but these companies still operate on the but we've always done it this way they try in, in you know be data oriented but they always default to what they know what their gut tells them like andreas was saying at the beginning of the call and i think it's how do we get them to really start to look at <clears throat> even their own the outcomes that they're measuring to right like what what is success and okay and then what are the levers that i have control over from an operational perspective. So very different from the data conversation, right? Data, you're looking at what could be thousands of potential places to influence. But in reality, at the operational level, there might be 10 things that I can actually dial in or dial out depending on my day. Um, but that's where I think we're, I'm trying to lean in with people and say, okay, I can't give you, if I make it super complex, they just can't, it, it's just too much for them. But what are the handful of things that they can dial in on and therefore can influence the outcome that they're responsible for? So for example, a sales team, all right? What are the things that in my behavior, in my management of my sales team will result in an improved conversion rate or improved uh, stickiness of a sale, right? We could have lots of sales, but if they're all canceled within 90 days because the client didn't get what they thought they were gonna get, that's not a good situation either. So that's where I'm kind of leaning in on. And, and, and maybe I'm babbling here. I don't know. It's, it, I do that a lot. But it's that, you know, one of the things like Andreas and I had this thing that we're really big on right now. And I know it's a qualitative thing, but it's this concept of leaning in around gratitude. And what is the impact of having a gratitude driven organization to those tangible outcomes that make the business run? like revenue generation or or sit or uh, client growth, whatever it is that your business is driving for in that day. And people go, yeah, but that's kind of stupid, Tim. How are you going to talk about, you know, people saying thank you and how does that translate into business? Well, Andreas, what did you see when you were doing that within your groups? You were seeing very tangible, measurable, tactical improvement in outcomes. And but that's... I think it's that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say that that's where I think it's it's unique with what what Gabby teed up, and then exactly what right. you were saying, Tim, of getting back to the the quiet quitting and attrition that I think the, the entire, regardless of what industry you're in, is seeing right now is challenging. It all kind of, in my mind, revolves around data. So if you organize the data the right way and you visually present it, which is going to you know has the best retention out of the, uh, the the population that you're you're presenting into, they get to make it their own. And so it goes hand in hand with making better decisions. You feel better about the job that you're doing because you're seeing it in the results. And then guess what? You're not quite quitting. You know, I'm, I'm completely oversimplifying sure. it right now. So neither one no. of you can, you know, you can get me after the, after the recording. But I think if you orientate the business around data you don't make it scary the scary part is kind of what gabby's doing and all the data cleanliness and right, all right. of that in the front end like i'm not even going to go down down that topic but once you have it there if you open it up to all of these groups it's not just a, a delivery from an operational thing it's what can marketing do to tap into it what can hr okay. do to tap into it what are all of these other and then guess what all of these siloed divisions and organization departments start working together more yeah. and make data-driven decisions you know exactly. so it's exactly um, and then you get your well, roi and your outcomes but yeah i exactly. think that, that that's a really nice um kind of, like the word data can be scary and i always try to simplify it for people around you know it's, it's just information it's just information that can power your decisions better information better data um and i think the way that our group will be successful here is by speaking the language of problems of the business user right. that's forever been the work Lee and I have done. So as we sort of yep. close things out here, I want to open up like the, the offline world to continue to talk about challenges they're having with data um, because that's a big part of our community push and whatever. You can learn more about the background of stuff that I've done in that space, but it is about exactly what you're saying, Anders, having teams work better together, talk to each other more, 
start leveraging information that's already being made accessible by their organization that they simply just don't know about because the tools were never built exactly for them until now. Um, so I look forward to continuing to chat with you both about the problems that you're seeing, the retention metrics, whatever the most common metrics are, which will of course change. And that's also something right. we want to build into the technology. Well, and I think that's a really exciting point to it. You know, it is an, it's an evolving bar, right? It's, so the expectations of the employees and the customers change. And therefore, we've got to be adjusting what we're, we're driving to. Um, and I'm excited by this because I, I do think we, you know, it's this kind of concept of structured and unstructured qualitative, quantitative data dealing with kind of messy things of people right but if we can come at this way and then start to leverage you know i think really the idea of llms especially if we can build out llms that maybe are, are more industry specific that drive the right outcomes um therefore that are fed by the right data that's accurate <laughs> which i is always kind of questionable but um that's where i think as we solve that problem you know accurate clean data that's meaningful and I think that's the, the interesting word, right? It's got to be meaningful to the audience that then can therefore make the right decisions based on what they need, which is going to be different. And But I also think that, Andreas, you were getting at it, is you look at like a marketing team can sit there and say, we're hugely successful. You know, we do X number of campaigns a month and everything else, and yet you're not getting the revenue growth that the company needs. So there's a disconnect there or talent acquisition or Andreas and I talk about this a lot, you know, this, like you've got these groups that are all, all in their own little silo going, yeah, I'm doing great. My numbers are awesome, but my outputs are not driving the right downstream impacts that we're all looking for. So, um, no, this is great. I, I really want to drive more of this. And I think there's a great opportunity maybe to get into, you know, hopefully maybe get prequel, you know, also, in addition to your, your primary customer base on the technology side, but to get it out there into the consumers of data, uh, where we're talking about really at the you know the COO and the, the chief human resources officers who are trying to get to those outcomes that are so desperately needed in their business these days. So this would be a lot of fun. Definitely, definitely. Anything you want to close with, Gabby? And I'd love to have you back for another round here in another few weeks, maybe, or in another month or so. We're going to talk Happy about where, to. how much success we've made. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about all the deals we've closed between now and then. Um, and, and I think there's a lot more we can do together. I don't know if you're looking for a third contest found, uh, host. Three, three might be a lot, but if that ever you need someone last minute. Um, yeah, I think the message that I want to close with, and again, it goes back to like, how do we close? First, I'll say one thing about the structured, unstructured data, which is we are in a moment where that question of, whether your data, it, like the where where teams would tell you, we simply can't get you know a real answer to that question because the words that it's coming from, it's living in one side of the system and it doesn't join well with the other. Like it's a solved, it's going to be a solved problem, and it's essentially already today a solved problem. You can join structured and unstructured data, and that's what my engineering team can you know fill us in on later. But but then how do you actually on the softer side like? start talking to people about the questions that they now have and make sure that those are questions that aren't just like popping into their head, but that are going to drive decision-making, drive value for the business um, and drive value for each of the teams that's asking them now that they can basically have whatever data they need, we'll worry about how it's structured. Now let's think about what we want to talk to our LLMs about and make sure that the structures are supported. Um, so I'm always here for for more questions there. I'm really interested in benchmarks right now, like being in the space of metric creation. And as more and more people are using the prequel product, it puts us in a super interesting spot where we can say to people, analytics teams, hey, I don't know if you saw this, but we're noticing an anomaly in your data, or this is a mm -hmm. great question that every other company in your space is asking of its employees. We can actually start telling people, you know, this is how you should be running your business with information, which is awesome. Um, so always excited to chat with people about that. And I've done a lot of work with also CX teams and, you know, the people on the ground who actually need the information. So don't hesitate to reach out. I'm really easy to find on LinkedIn and I answer things and would love to continue hanging out with both of you. Thank you so much for having me. You know, Gabby, it's been a pleasure to have you with us today and uh, very, very exciting. I'm, I'm, I have a feeling that we're going to be doing a lot of, uh, 
joint conversations with our pre cool future partners here. Mr. Andreas, you want to close it out for everybody? Not hey, I think you guys covered everything. Uh, Gabby, uh, pleasure having you on. Great discussion. Uh, next time, maybe it'll just be you and I. We'll uh, we'll leave Tim out. We'll cut and, Tim uh, out. <laughs> Let him sleep in after the wedding, you know. <laughs> Exactly. So, no, in all seriousness, really, really great conversation. Look forward to um, further conversation and any comments. Uh, feel free to reach out and we will um, we will circle back with you. But great discussion and thanks for listening to Stop Doing Stupid Stuff. <laughs>